Hello. Uh, today I'm going to be doing something uh, a little different. Um, well, I guess not exactly different. Uh, uh, essentially, uh, I'm going to be talking about George Lucas. And um, what brought this on is I was watching a live stream that happened today and watch it as it was going on but they were talking about some movies and stuff and some recent movies and like that just came out and the conversation took a turn to something about Star Wars and then how George Lucas is or George Lucas quit making movies because of the fans and the fan backlash and how he was saying oh that's not happened that didn't happen, you know, okay, what happened, you know, it doesn't make sense, he was so popular for X amount of years, stopped directing because he didn't like it, and, yeah, now, uh, <clears throat> I have to say, I have never heard from George Lucas that he ever disliked directing or hated it. Now, you can argue that in terms of what he does in filmmaking-wise, he likes to create the stories and write them, and even produce movies. You could say he likes doing that more than uh, directing. Okay, fine. But I've never heard him say he dislikes directing or hates directing. He's very visually directing, he's a very visual director, he's somebody who likes telling stories, and if you look at some of his early films, like short films in particular, you can see that, and in many ways, Star Wars is a very visual film, yes, there is dialogue, and there is characters, but like, you know, I wrote something uh, it's quite lengthy, but essentially what I'm saying here will be from this. So, you know. So, I essentially just begin with uh, George Lucas likes directing. There have been people that say things like, oh, well, you know, uh, he never liked it. He just did it because, you know, I guess Coppola was a big influence on him uh, getting into that direction of, in terms of filmmaking of uh, directing his own stuff you know, in that case of what people have said around him what people around him say isn't entirely accurate in that what I mean by that is when you read articles and stuff there are things people have said, but there is no full context. Like, things are taken out of context. Um, the main reason is... The re main reason he likes directing is he likes creating... He enjoys creating films. He loves making films, you know? And if you're making a movie... Apologize for thunder, but... Yeah. It's that time of year here. It's not part of this, but if you hear any thunder, there you go. Apologies. But anyway, you know, if you're going to be a filmmaker, directing, you know, you get to make the decisions of what happens into your movie. You know, you also help shape the script. Maybe you don't read write it or anything, but you have quite the influence over it. Like, maybe there's something here in the script that you don't like, but maybe there's a good idea there. You try and extract that great idea, or a good idea that's there, and you make it as presentable on screen as you possibly can. Um, so, yeah. I've never seen or read any... I've never seen or read anything where George Lucas says he dislikes or hates directing.
This is something people have made up over time due to authors of various articles and blogs. Find some stuff from some actors and other people who have worked with Lucas behind the scenes. Find certain quotes that will fit their narrative. That fit the narrative they want to create. So then these quotes are taken out of context so it will fit the narrative, the writer's intentions, and then present an article or blog about anything negative about George Lucas. So people who read these feel re read these and not look for the original sources or even at the original sources. Like maybe they'll have the actual source linked, but how many people actually do that? How many people actually check on the links of articles or blogs that are sourced? I know there are people, many people who don't. Uh, they just look at it at face value, don't even bother. Like, why? Uh, no. And they just take it all at face value as a result, and they just think, ah, George Lucas just didn't like directing. He didn't like that position. This is something I cons consistently see when reading things people... What they write about George Lucas and even talking about George Lucas, about the d later films he directed in his life, like, uh, you know, the Star Wars prequels, most more specifically. And then other people will say how he always hated directing, and then just parrot what they read or heard people say without looking into this themselves. So, to add to that, you know, uh, one thing I often see is Ron Howard talking about George Lucas, and what he would say is, uh, he liked animating, he was in animation and film school and such, and he just liked that more, he liked animation where you could make the actors, or the characters do what you want by drawings, and the actors can just voice stuff, and he liked, he seemed to like that more. Well, yes, maybe it's true George Lucas liked animation, because he did go into animation, and, or, or that was like a specialty of his uh, when he was at film school, besides from doing cinematography and stuff and then editing. He liked so much stuff in the filmmaking process. Um, uh, he, though, he does... Uh, Just because he might be very interested in animation does not mean he dislikes directing live action. And the thing is, that's really it for George Lucas, or what it, Ron Howard ever has to say about when like, he's directing. I, know, I haven't exactly seen when they quote this from Ron Howard. I often just see that quote. There's really nothing more to it, or after, though if there is anything more, it's often that he liked George Lucas, oh, I liked working with him, he was a great guy, he, in a way, he encouraged, he, I think, I believe he did encourage Ron Howard to direct, though, I, I think it would also, like, just do cartoons, so you don't necessarily have to work with that, that was the thing, he made a comment like that, that was it, and it's like, you know, in a way, I guess it's not entirely wrong, exactly, because I guess you could get a good vocal performance and then have animators animate all that, but still, that just means he thinks, you know, maybe animation would be a bit better than live action. Like, with live action, there's a lot of hassle also, not just the actors, you have to Make sure everything on set or on location is exactly how you want it. You have to get everything like that where an animation could just draw it. Does this necessarily mean he dislikes, you know, directing overall? No. He's just telling him, he was just telling Ron Howard essentially that it's hard to direct 
essentially it's harder to direct live action than it would to direct animation. Because sometimes, you know, maybe the actors, depending on one's schedule, they could perhaps, uh, like if it's an early independent film and you're just having such a low budget, maybe some actors aren't very dependable. They're not very, they're not on time or they're, they can't make it certain days because something came up or they're just making excuses. Um, where I guess if you're doing animation, you have them in a booth, essentially with a microphone. Have them read the lines, have them for some hours, depending on the length of the script. Maybe you could actually get them to crank out all their lines in an afternoon. Um, essentially, it's, but I don't, I never saw what Ron Howard said ever, even that out of context exactly. Because I, I don't know the full context. I think there's probably more into that. that we're talking about George Lucas. There just seems uh, to be a lot more there, I would assume, because George Lucas uh, seemed to leave a fairly good, fairly decent impact on Ron Howard. And, you know, also, perhaps George Lucas was uh, joking, trying to have like his, uh, well, George Lucas doesn't necessarily strike many people as somebody who's really humorous. He, he seems to, you know, some people, you know, because he, he's a quiet guy, but doesn't mean he doesn't have a sense of humor. Maybe he says something like that to Howard, and it's, it was meant as a, ha ha, there's some seriousness to it. You know, he's joking, because, you know, jokes often, they're, depending on what they are, there is some degree of truth to them. But, you know, it's somewhat true, but eh, eh, don't take it too seriously. Um, also, since I've always read it, I don't know the entire... Uh, I don't know if there's ever a ha-ha kind of feeling to that uh, whole thing. Uh, so, uh, moving on... Uh, the thing George Lucas has often said he disliked when it came to filmmaking is screenwriting. He originally wanted to make documentaries where you don't really need to write anything. You just pick a topic for the film, the documentary, you interview people, and as a result, you don't really need to write a script for anything. The narrative essentially creates itself. Now, perhaps there's narration involved, sure, but, you know, that would come later, right? You don't necessarily, you know, maybe you could actually show some people, like, create something and make little, though if it's a documentary, you probably know enough about something, but then you get people, you interview people, and then from there, those interviews... You might learn some more stuff, and from all that, you add to to what you've already uh, what you know. Like you might write a little synopsis of what you want to talk about for your documentary when you talk to people. You might show footage of stuff or pictures or what have you, depending on what the topic is. Um, so. There is that, and um, he later changed from documentary filmmaking to narrative type films. He wanted to make them abstract like, um, which with that, with George Lucas, you get films like THX 1138. Films that really just required a story, some characters, and then let the visuals tell everything with little do dialogue required. Because and as I said before, George Lucas is a very, he's a great visual director. I would say he's one of the best visual directors ever. To him, he liked making films. Liked directing, liked producing, liked editing. But he always just liked writing. Um, 
but he has acknowledged the irony is that what he mostly does now is right. Um, this is from when he talked to Christopher Nolan during like an interview discussion about Star Wars. When they had a screening of Episode 4 for some people for like the DGA in 2011. The only thing he actually enjoyed about writing uh, was the creation of worlds, characters, and overall story. So in a way, yes, he does like writing, just the overall story. Uh, he would rather have someone else take the pages he wrote for a story and write the script for him, or perhaps collaborate with him on the script. That way, you know, maybe if the story seems out there, he's there to help write the script and they'll balance ideas off of each other and it'll all be great. Or at least in theory, it should be great. Um, the screenplay, that is. Um, now with Star Wars 4 and or 5 and 6, the reason he didn't write direct those films was because of how stressful it was from directing Star Wars 4. And also doing his best to establish his company and to have it flourish and produce different films than just the films Lucas himself would make. Basically what American Zoetrope was originally created for. Um, though it seems to be fairly um, a copeless company. Um, I don't know a whole lot about American Zoetrope uh, side of what just some of the films I've seen but all those films that were presented by American Zoetrope or directed by Coppola where he produced them he has something involved you know. essentially what Lucas wanted for Lucasfilm was people could come and make movies their own way and also for like the Skywalker Ranch people could come here edit their movies and all that good jazz. Uh, essentially, he just wanted to create a company that was independent and could uh, live on its own and not necessarily require the studio for funds. To be totally independent. The studios essentially would then just be there to release the film, uh, a film, uh, throughout the world, distributed. Uh, uh, as a result of all of that, and also, I'm sure George Lucas knew it was not going to be an easy time directing Star Wars. It was a, really no movie uh, was like Star Wars, the closest he he said was 2001, a space odyssey. That was as close as you can make it, and yet it was also so different. The filmmaking style, story, visuals, and the special effects, and everything were just different. It wasn't going to be exactly the same, obviously. And it isn't. It isn't the same at all to, like, uh, 2001. But, but you know... That doesn't mean it wasn't an influence in any way, but, you know, that, that's, that's just how it is. Uh, you know, that's how it is. It's not a direct influence, yet there is influence there, if that makes sense. That's what I'm trying to say. So, as a result of all that, difficult time or stressful time directing it though uh, and I'm sure I, I think George Lucas actually did have fun during episode 4 the shooting of it uh, there are obviously stories of him talking and uh, cast members talking about the experience and seeing him and there were miserable times yes but there were also good times that people don't like to that you know also since the cast was fairly young and up and coming uh, you know 
that you kind of wanted to you have a script you have an idea in your head you want everybody to perform as well and I also want to take a moment to talk about a similarity I have with George Lucas with Steve Jobs you might think that's an odd comparison you just hear me out and stick with me Steve Jobs you know as great of a genius as he was, and as amazing he was as an innovator and a idea man, he was a total jerk. Obviously, you know, he was an ass. He would get angry and yell and be like, when people who were designing like software or something for a, a new computer by Apple, and this software system or something wasn't ready or there are or it was ready but it doesn't work how it's supposed to which as a result you know it isn't ready but I guess in a way everything they did they did essentially they finished it but it just there's bugs it didn't work properly essentially um, Steve Jobs would get angry and yell at the people or person in charge of that and wondering why isn't this working you had X amount of time to do this should be done by now like I I, I planned it out I I essentially I created the idea I essentially wrote it out gave it to you you said this could work it should work and it's not why and like uh in the movie Steve Jobs, there was like three weeks to do something, and like the, it wasn't ready, or and essentially there was not enough time for this to get made. He couldn't entirely understand why they couldn't just do this. They are good. They are the people for this job, the person for this job. They should do it. I told them what it is, I explained it, I even wrote it out maybe just so for reference so they can look at it and do what they're doing and it should be done by now. There's a deadline, the deadline's now, it's not working. He couldn't understand that uh, some things like some software uh, that was being made or is maybe they're improving on needs more time he couldn't understand that exactly obviously that doesn't mean he's stupid he, it's just something he lacks that's just something that some people do lack George Lucas when directing he would like talk to the actors like before they start shooting like explain some things like oh, give context to this uh, a bit more context that's not just on the scene or written on the page so they can understand they might know more bit more innovation and such and then he would have the actors do the scene and then he would often say okay great but faster and more intense and then they do another take that's like his main direction is faster and more intense just just do it again and then Harrison Ford would be like, you know, you got to give us some more direction, you know. You know, that's all well and good for me, like, first few takes, but after a while, you know, we want, we want you to say something else, or tell me something else, tell us something else more. And George Lucas is like, what do you mean? I, what do you mean? It's all right there. I... It's all on the paper. It's all on the page. Just do it. You're a, you're the actor. You're the person for this job. Your job's to act. So act. I, I told you what it is. I wrote it down. I told you a little bit of how I kind of want this scene to be played. So just do that. And read the lines like it. Like you would. So just do it. And then Harrison Ford would be like, well, sometimes you just can't. You 
Sometimes you just can't do that. And, um, you know, So there you go, that's my link between Steve Jobs and George Lucas. I apologize, but hey. You know. That's something I've been thinking about and kind of wanted to talk about on here a little bit, but hey. Maybe. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't. This was just some. Parallels I connected. Um, so essentially, due to the stress with Star Wars, when it came to do episodes five and six, you know, he didn't direct those films. You know, he wanted just to create the story, write them out, out, write them out. And Produce the movies, essentially, handle it. You know, so making an Empire and Jedi, he uh, would just show up on set time to time, offering his insight and advice to the directors that he hired. But um, he was going to make sure, for instance, like the effects team were on schedule. Make the make sure that films were financially afloat and that didn't go over budget. And if they didn't go over budget, have to you know deal with that. And uh, yeah, during the time he wasn't directing, he wrote stories, produced films like Indiana Jones, Will, other movies. Well, he took a break from directing. And he actually did want to get back into directing by the 90s. Uh, but to him, he was either going to direct the Star Wars prequels, might be another trilogy of sorts, like the continuation of the Return of the Jedi. Uh, though, between a sequel trilogy and the prequels, the prequels interested him, interested him more. So it was either more Star Wars, or he was going to create new and artistic type films, sort of in the vein of THX 1138. Abstract films with very a visual story, with probably little dialogue. Um, and if he did that, he would abandon Star Wars uh, basically forever, because he said if he went down the road of the artistic films. Uh, nobody would see anything new regarding Star Wars. That would be it. But ever since he created a bit of a backstory from Star Wars with the original unseen 300-page script that Lucas has talked about on occasion, which is basically the over view over the story of the original trilogy, as well as taking inspiration from the various drafts cause he, of episode 4, because he wrote so many. Uh, from all of that, plus with the back, some added backstory with that uh, came about with episodes 5 and 6, he began to write the prequels, and then finally released them. But then when people began to not like the prequels over time because people did enjoy the films initially basically um, you know people didn't just begin to hate the films but they uh, began to hate George Lucas and um, I always thought that was ridiculous while there may be people who just like him for not releasing the original unaltered trilogy uh, properly, because I've said there was a DVD set release or DVDs released in 2006 with both the special editions and on the altered original trilogy films, but the aspect ratio wasn't the best. Like it was like a 
like that, and the bars are on the sides. If you have a white screen TV, that doesn't stretch it all the way. Um, and it was for my laser disc. Uh, uh, copy, like there was like a or a print of a film. It was a la laser disc print of a film, and it didn't look the best. Essentially, is the bottom line. This didn't look or sound as fantastic as you would hope. The thing is, George Lucas himself believes the unaltered original theatrical versions of the Star Wars trilogy are inferior versions to those films. And I guess to him, it would just seem like a waste of time to put them all on Blu-ray. Now, I personally would like the option of viewing the original unaltered trilogy the special editions on Blu-ray. I myself would like that. Um, now, yeah. But, again, you can even say this to the a parallel to Steve Jobs in that he doesn't understand why people like what are in his eyes the comp incomplete theatrical versions of those films other than the special editions available that we have now on Blu-ray and DVD. To him, those are the versions of the film uh, that should have been released. The special editions should have always been released in the 70s and 80s. That's what we all should have gotten. Well, I wasn't around in the 70s or 80s, but still. To him, the, the, the theatrical versions that uh, were released should never have been released in the first place. He even said so in the uh, after it uh, came out. He even said the film was incomplete. The original Star Wars was incomplete. He was a bit disappointed with it uh, due to the technology not being there. But, you know, he hoped in the coming years technology would catch up and he could realize the vision he always had for those films. And he did. These versions, these special edition versions were the, ver were the visions that he always had in his head when he crafted the story and then made them after writing them with the people involved, either a, a film he directed or others. You know, he crafted them and he wanted them to look the way they do, how we can view them now. Uh, and he kept on adding things over the years. Whether people like the special edition versions of the films or not, that's a different story. Um, you know, you can like them, you can dislike them, you can love them, you can hate them, whatever. It's all fine. Uh, one could like something and somebody can like something else. No law against anything like that. So, to wrap up this whole thing, to wrap up George Lucas. I'm going to talk about how George Lucas quitting films was due to, uh, you know, due to the hate. There is truth to that. There is truth to that claim. It's not just something, oh, people just made up. You know, there's truth to it. He said it around 2009, 2010, when asked when Star Wars 7 was going to come out, he said, never. Why would I make any more when people keep saying what a horrible person I am for making them? The bashing George Lucas got online is a reason for why we'll never see a new film he directs.
He did say in 2012 that he will be directing small, artistic, independent films about topics nobody wants to see, but he will only show them to his friends and family. Nobody outside, on the outside, like you and I, average Joe, might be interested in seeing a new film from George Lucas. Yeah, we'll never see that. So, it's a combination of the hate he got online and how the films he wants to make are of topics and themes he believes people don't want to see. Now, I could go on and on, but, you know, I've gone on long enough. I think you get my point. The only sort of somewhat credible credence for that was Ron Howard saying how, oh, it's for directing, it's better to just do animation than live action because you don't really have to deal with the actors while you're there in the booth. But again, I've always read that. I've never heard Howard say that, repeat that, or anything. So, I don't know the entire context of that. Honestly, I've always heard that kind of excerpt from it. Um, uh, essentially, the point I was making is George likes directing still. He, del he actually enjoyed it. He wanted to go back even in the 80s, but he was focusing on the company. That was the thing. And also, he had a daughter, he went through a divorce. Uh, that happened as Empire Strikes Back was completed. And that kind of set him back a bit, also. Like, he just like, I'm not going to direct right now. I'm just going to write stories and produce films run the company and focus on my daughter. Focus on raising her. And then he adopted two more kids. And then it got to a point where he uh, felt comfortable. Like things in his life were good and uh, he just he was just happy. And he felt it was time for him to direct again and he decided on the Star Wars prequels. So, there you go. That's my whole spiel on George Lucas on directing. And how he is a good director, visually, and how he likes directing. He always enjoyed it, but mostly he enjoyed it uh, from a visual standpoint. Let the visuals tell you itself with little dialogue. Because he's not fond of writing uh, scripts, uh, you know, screenplays. Writing stories, creating characters, and any kind of interesting worlds, and uh, things like of that nature. That's what he loves. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, there you go. I don't really have anything else to say. It's uh, almost a 40 minute video, so uh, I think that's all. I'll, uh, I will see you guys next time. Hope you all have a good day, a good week. See you next time.